I am French Canadian and I have escaped Canada. The Chinese government has gamified obedience by building up this social credit score system. I have grown up in Canada and I went to university there, started working for a couple of years and it was like witnessing an accident in slow motion. It's an unfair competition, the game is rigged. Bitcoin changes everything. It turns that whole system around. When I heard about Bitcoin for the first time i was mind blown i said wow yes that will restore the freedom we used to have before i was always running trying to catch up with the hamster wheel i need to get into real estate as fast as possible else i'm going to be stuck in slavery forever i don't have those worries anymore with bitcoin i know i'm going to be fine and i can focus my mind on the beauty of life the longer someone is in bitcoin it feels like the the more sin they have in in, in life Um, before we get into all other topics that, that you talked about before and that we, I, I really want to get into, um, I had already like six or seven uh, guests out of my 203, you are the 203rd guest now that actually st said like, I don't want to be completely uh, anonymous. Some actually showed a face without uh, re revealing their identity. But if you show your face, you kind of reveal your identity uh, to some extent, but they don't want to attach their face to, to an actual name. Um, so I'm always curious, um, why and what's the, what's the motivation, uh, behind that strategy. And, and, uh, it's for me, it's like there, there's like one really novel thing in it because you're contributing, uh, to the Bitcoin community or whichever community you're contributing to, but in that, in that sense, Bitcoin and you don't take personal credit for in your name you can always of course after that take the pseudonym and as as uh, daniel bitcoin gandalf did recently put your name on top of that that's a that's an option but till you do that you don't really take credit uh in a personal sense so i'm always really curious uh why you're doing it is it just a safety or a security concern or, or are there other things to it uh it's both uh look we're Bitcoiners, right? And Satoshi himself is the biggest example I can think of of someone or many people who made a huge impact by staying anonymous. Uh, so you don't have to give out your identity uh, to talk about ideas. Um, look, I'm a big believer in decentralized identities. And I do use my real identities uh, on other accounts and in my real life. Uh, so I have created many accounts with many levels of anonymity, right? So um, with my real name, um, I have met other people. I do promotion of Bitcoin in my local area where I live. And uh, I have those conversations uh, in my friend group. I expose myself as a Bitcoiner already to the people around me. But uh, when I want to have uh, express an opinion that is a little bit more sensitive, uh, I will prefer to do it with an anonymous account. And I think uh, it's better for me uh, to, to do so. Um, the other reason you said was it for security concern. Um, look, um, I am French Canadian and I have escaped, uh, Canada in the recent years. And I have put, uh, look, uh, I'm not ashamed to say I have put everything in Bitcoin by leaving my country. And <laughs> just by saying that, it puts a huge target on on my back, right? Uh, so I don't tell that to people around me in real life, but uh, I'm less afraid to say it uh, anonymously uh, on on the internet. Yeah. So uh, I, I do believe that the the world is kind of turning to shit right now, and uh, Bitcoin is uh, is the beacon of truth for people who want to remain true to themselves and uh, who believe in a better future. But in the same time, look, hard times are coming and 
I have personally uh, experienced it by leaving my own country, you know. Uh, I've had friends and family turn against me. Uh, I was close to, uh, close to, uh, be fired from my job. You know, I quit, I, I quit my job. I left everything behind. And I'm quite sure that if I did not quit, uh, some reason will have been made up to make me quit because of who I am, because of my personal opinion. So I felt the, the pressure building up and I just said, look, I, I have to leave before I become a target. And so all of that combined. Yeah. Uh, I think hard times are coming, uh, for Bitcoiners. We can say we're already in hard time, but I think it's, it's nothing uh, compared to what's to come. And uh, I think by that time, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's better to not have a target on our back. So if I'm going to express some opinions or uh, just reveal that uh, I'm all in in Bitcoin, I prefer to do it anonymously. That's very fair, and, and that's uh, a really good reason also. Um, and, and I love the, what you're saying here with, with leaving Canada and, and hard times are coming. I myself are <laughs> in, in the process of kind of uh, researching about options uh, of, okay, I'm in Austria, I like the country, uh, I feel good here. But Sorry, may, may what, I interrupt what, what, you a little bit? Yeah, uh, I think you have one of your sponsor is... Uh, has a product about uh, a new citizenship or going abroad, if I understood right. Yes. Uh, can actually, you, can you tell me a little bit more about that? Is it related uh, to that? Yeah, it's it's um, it's one of the options that I consider. Like uh, I partnered up with the Bitcoin Way because I think that the Bitcoin Way is really good in bulletproofing your self custody and asking you all the qu hard questions that a lot of people don't want to face if they set up their own self custody. How to make it as secure as possible? Um, that was the primary reason why I um, partnered up with them in the begin with. But they have a plan B. Uh, they call it the, the citizenship. Uh, and they basically, um, everyone just, just to get this out of the way first, um, if you want to consider that you can book like a 30 minute free call and then they just like give you the advantages of, of, of doing that and, and how, how it's done and how much it costs and stuff like that. I, I did it myself with, with Tony as this is one options that I consider. It's basically a citizenship, uh, in, in Panama, uh, for a, a really affordable price in, in, in my sense. Uh, I don't want to take anything from the Bitcoin way <laughs> away, so uh, so I, I I leave it at that. Uh, but uh, this is an interesting option, but it also involves me not being in Austria too long. Otherwise, Austria still taxes me. <laughs> so that's one of the things that I want to uh, not do. But Panama is really interesting because you don't have to stay there. You basically can stay there the first two years. Uh, you have to be there the for the signing up phase, like it's a week. Uh, then after six months, you have to come back and sign something. And then after two years, you have to come back again. So it's like you're there three times. Uh, you have a two year citizenship and then you can extend it for a, a longer period of time. I mean, even a permanent one, I think, but I don't want to talk too much about that because I'm just starting to get into uh, exploring those options and I'm not an expert till now. Like I, I, I just want to get this out of the way. I want to be an expert in that topic, <laughs> but I'm not, <laughs> not yet. Uh, there's also really close to Austria, Switzerland, which is not in the EU, uh, hmm. has a way better, uh, political and tax system, in my opinion, uh, and basically has the same landscape and, la uh, landscape than Austria, like mountains, lakes, and, and very beautiful, uh, victory. Then, of course, they're like the, the usual options that, that are known in the internet, like Dubai, uh, and stuff like that. Although for people that are really rich, uh, Monaco uh, is a, is an interesting option. It's not an option for me <laughs> financially. Uh, but it's one of the, if, if you really have a lot of money, you can consider Monaco. Uh, so there are a lot of options and I'm right now in the phase just of gathering options. I'm not even assessing my options till now. I'm just gathering as many options possible. Uh, I'm also setting up some calls with people from Dubai, uh, from people from Switzerland, from people uh, everywhere from the world and just seeing what, what, what could I do? That, that's all yeah. that I mean. 
That's really interesting, and I think that's a real growing market. Um, when I did it, I cannot pretend I'm an expert either. You know, I just uh, picked the best option for myself, and it's really um, a, a personal decision in the end. Uh, there is no one answer fit all. It's all about you, what kind of job you have, uh, can it, how, how remotely, what's your uh, citizenship of origin and where you want to live, what kind of climate, what kind of culture are you most familiar with. So there are so many things to take into account and the, 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 the legal framework also how long it takes to get a new citizenship. If you even, even want a citizenship, you can, in some countries, you can stay as a resident, uh, with no problems. Um, and yeah, you talk about Panama. Panama was, uh, I, I seriously considered that option. Uh, finally, I decided I wanted to live in Asia. So I am talking to you from the, uh, Asia, an Asian time zone. Um, uh, so I, I picked a country in Asia and, um, I, I worked toward a new citizenship in one of those countries. And I'm really glad right now because uh, it's been, yeah, it's been a couple of years. <laughs> um, I, I studied how to get a citizenship uh, in that country. And uh, like the one possibility is to get married. Uh, another one is to spend a lot of money and kind of buy it off uh, to like reduce the, the, the requirements. Uh, but I did not want to sell out of uh, all of my bitcoins. I had already put all my wealth in Bitcoin by that time. Once I stepped in the country. Okay. I, I need to say I have left Canada before deciding, uh, in which country I was going to settle. So I took one year off, uh, just traveling, uh, between, uh, many, many countries. I, it was in 2018. Yeah. I took the whole year in 2018 and I traveled in, in many countries. I took, uh, I took the whole year off and I wanted to spend a couple of months, uh, in each country and see what the people are like. Maybe made of, make a few friends, uh, see like how the, the, the renting, uh, rent an apartment situation is, how the food is, how everything is, how basic life is. And you really get to experience that by living there. Uh, so I just took the whole year to travel between many countries. And by the end of 2018, uh, if you were already into Bitcoin at that time, it was the time of the, the BSV drop. <laughs> so the price had dropped. Um, it, it had held the 6,000, <laughs> the 6,000, uh, Price, price range for the whole year. But then after that, it dropped down to 3000. And I said, no way I'm going to sell my Bitcoin at that price. And I'm not going to buy a citizen, spend all my Bitcoin to buy the citizenship. So I'm just going to pull up my sleeve and uh, find a job and start working in, uh, in a country, in a new country. And that opened the door to get the work permit, uh, work visa in uh in a new country uh in one in which i had lived during the year 2018 and yeah i i went back to that country and i am living there since that time and now i have uh the residency criteria filled because i have lived there for long enough uh i have held a job in the country for long, long enough so I did not have to spend the money and I am ready to apply for the citizenship this year. As, uh, as we're talking right now, we are, uh, I'm going to get the last, uh, last, uh, translated document process this week and I'm ready to make the final application. So, uh, I'm just crossing my finger and, uh, I hope my hard work of the last few years will, uh, will, uh, will pay off, right? And I, I can, attest to how how hard it it can be uh, as i mentioned many times on the podcast that my girlfriend is from india originally and she lives in austria right now uh, uh with me and i go with her to all the steps how she can 
just stay in the country, <laughs> like not not even going to citizenship uh, and going to passport, just staying here and working. Um, there are a lot of requirements, a lot of legal documents, a lot of uh, hurdles and challenges you have to jump through uh, to get there. I don't know how it's in Asia and other countries. I only have I only have to post uh, the, the 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 seeing now from from Austria firsthand or secondhand kind of, uh, but it's uh, it's it's already a lot. So I can I can attest to that. It, it could could be a lot of hard work and it's long working and, and trying to do something and then there's the application uh, and, and the thing about the language requirement i had to uh, pass the classes too so uh holding the job what? pass the uh, pass the classes go back to university and uh, uh, have the language class to uh, there was a language requirement too so uh so that was a hard one too. <laughs> um, you mentioned uh, before we, we uh, as, as we talked uh, started talking that you did that as a preparation uh, for uh, that hard times are coming. Um, maybe can you can explain us a little bit like what do you define as hard times? What do you see coming in the in, in the future, ex especially to the Western world? Uh, and and so basically, like what are you fleeing? For? Yeah. Uh, I have lived, uh, b before I went away, I have grown up in Canada and I, I start, I, I went to university there, start working for a couple of years and it was like witnessing an accident in slow, in slow motion. Uh, it was like seeing, s seeing everything collapse around me. Like I, I'm used to growing up in a free country where I can say things and now there's more and more censorship. I cannot talk to the people around me. People become much colder. People are, because people are more afraid, afraid of losing their job, afraid of being excluded. And I just couldn't live like that. And, um, I used to Put a lot of hopes in politics. Uh, during all my twenties, I, I, uh, I did not really uh, get involved in in a party, but I was kind of a political nerd. I used to follow it really closely and put a lot of hope into it because I hope we could reverse the situation, go back right, uh, go back on the right track. And stop this decline. This, uh, and everything is declining. Taxes are going up. They're never, never going down. Uh, the economic situation is declining for everybody. It's getting harder and harder to live. And it has accelerated, uh, since, uh, since COVID, COVID. Uh, but I have witnessed it from, from afar, but, uh, I do believe it because it had started a long time ago and everything is, uh, the, the decline is, has become a free fall. Um, ev uh, we're going down and it, it's accelerating. People are getting poorer. <laughs> Inflation has reached the two digits. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you can see how, how, in, in how the people around you live. Uh, you you can see the food that is on the table is getting lower and lower. Uh, you can see people are getting busier and busier. People are losing hope. And I could like zoom out and think, where is this going? And I did not like that. And um, I, I used to watch a lot of YouTube. I'm still watching a lot of YouTube, but... Uh, in the early 2010s, there was <laughs> the, there was a small YouTube channel about video games that I used to follow. Uh, called uh, it still exists. It's called Extra Credit. Uh, they're, they're Americans, and uh, one video really strike a chord within me when they start talking about how the Chinese government has gamified uh, obedience by uh, building up, and that was in the early 2000s and 10s, yeah, uh, by building up the social credit score system. And, uh, they, they said, 
oh, they are going to implement this uh, by, it's going to be mandatory by 2020. And I was like, okay, this is where things are going. This is the future that I want to avoid at all costs. Because I know, uh, I grew up with computers by, 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 by gaming. I, I just, uh, uh, I, I just, for some reason, I just could see where this was going. <laughs> and I did not want to live in a controlled environment. I did not want to live in prison. There's no way for me to strive in, in that situation. And by the late 2010, yeah, by 2017, I could see what I was seeing on podcast in YouTube. I could see the threat. I, I, I will be starting to see it around me. I will see people around me starting to be afraid of having some conversations at work, afraid of being fired. Uh, I could, uh, I, I had to apply self-censorship all the time, walk on eggshells at my workplace because, uh, I wouldn't know if I would be the next victim of some, so, some made up bullshit. Uh, and I, I had to get out of there. I had to get out of there. Um, so yeah, yeah. That was, that was by 2017. Yeah. Have a question. Oh no, that's uh, that's uh, it's it's really interesting for me how, uh, how how good you observed that, and I think like I heard that first with the social credit system that Canada is doing that. I think I heard it first like two years ago that Trudeau is actually doing that uh, as as they're doing it in China. But uh, go on with your story. I... Well, uh, I've experienced it. I told you my uh, I had a a YouTube channel. Uh, before when i was still in canada that's been banned <laughs> for the same reason <laughs> for for that reason uh just because i talk about uh, politically incorrect uh, incorrect topics right okay so uh i i had put lots of hope in politics but i could see uh when when trudeau got elected it was it was such a disappointment i i could see that that's that's going in the wrong way. I, because before that, I would see, I would think we could still change course. But when we gave that guy full power to go the way China was going, I, I just lost hope in the local politics in Canada. I was, I started to follow a little bit more American politics and Trump and everything. But I, about Canada, I, 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 I decided no, that that country uh, will be gone for some time. And uh, yeah, by that time, my my job uh, was becoming uh, unsatisfying too. Um, I did not see any improvement or hope to that it will get better. Uh, I had studied okay, I, I, I studied uh, mathematics and statistics at uh, university and uh, in uh, in Montreal. I uh, I started working as a data data analyst, and when I started working, I, I was like, "Whoa, that's great! Uh, we have our small team. We're going to uh, make our survey, make it nice, uh, get our finding, uh, present present it present it in a beautiful and clear manner, and yeah, it's going to be great." Uh, but then. We, we, we did our survey once. We, uh, we, it went fine for a couple of years. I built up our systems. Uh, I did the programming, but I was never shown any credit for it. You know, uh, the whole organization will take the credit from my hard work, but me as a low end worker, <laughs> I will not get any credit for it. And what will get worse is that uh, once we start getting a little bit more successful in our project, the, uh, well, the other, it's, it was kind of a larger organization, right? And the other departments will have the, the word to say about how we run our, uh, our projects. But, um, it will not be adapted to, uh, the, like their, 
their, their criteria and their way of doing will not be adapted to the uh, to to the questions we wanted to ask and the data we would like to find. And I was like, why do we have to? Why do they even have a word to say uh, about our project? So I would be in a situation where I have to start contacting people and doing a work that I did not anymore believe in because I did not make it myself. So I will have to attach my name to a project that I know was kind of failing. And uh, it's like, it's like I will not be paid for actual work. I will be paid for taking the bullshit. And the work you actually do, you do not even receive the credit for it. So I said, no, I cannot stay in that environment. So I start looking around, start looking for a new job. But then I realize everywhere is the same place. It's the same thing. It's the same thing everywhere. Everyone I talk to about the people, uh, among the people I graduated with, they will be in a worse off situation than me. So I'm like, what the hell? What am I supposed to do? Like, uh, Am I supposed to <laughs> lick my boss ass <laughs> to uh, get get a promotion? Like, is that the only way to be successful in this country? Is there? Because I I chose to study this and to work hard because I want to improve myself and I want to uh, to to find data in all that noise. I want to be able to see the the trends and be able to present it and to communicate it. Uh, but then that's not what I was hired to do at all. I was just hired to, uh, take the blame when things go wrong. And the thing, things will go wrong because of decisions I will not be making in the first place. So is it the only reason I am paid for? So I start getting really disappointed in my job. Uh, cause I was like, in my fiat job, I will be trading my time, trading my giving away my youth, my my brain power, my health, mental health, for what in return, right? Um, yeah, it, so I was that, disappointed in politics and in the uh, in my job too. Yeah, I think that's a really interesting point. Um, I see that, I mean, it's upside from, from Bitcoin, actually. Uh, maybe it has a little bit to do with Bitcoin, but uh, even that point, I see more and more where people... We, we haven't feared the, uh, a money printer and the closer you stay to the money printer, uh, especially large c corporations that really benefit from, uh, um, cheap credits and they can basically print money themselves. They benefit from the system a lot. Uh, in that way, uh, they can keep employees in, in the organizations that basically don't do anything or just there so there is someone that is like the uh there's there's this thing of like having someone to blame as you described it there's this thing of like oh we have we have to put also another woman in that team because there has to be some quote or there has to be some some asian in that team so like the the quote asian like there, there's a lot of um uh, BS going on in large corporations. Uh, this is to a large extent, I think, the fiat, fiat, uh, uh, fault, but it's also a human fault. I think like this, uh, uh, some of the fault is just a human thing, uh, that will not go away, but a lot of things I think will be better on a Bitcoin standard when sound money, like when money is actually sound. Of course. Um, but that, that, that's a, that's really interesting where I see like, more and more of my generation, like I'm 25, I, I know people from, from that age, they want to work for themselves or want to work for a company, but want not to want to be in an employment situation. They want to be in freelancer. And there are some, um, I forgot his name, but there's some, someone that is, was an early investor in really big companies. Uh, he also got Bitcoin quite early on and he predicted uh, that uh, all uh, uh, workers eventually will be freelancers. Or he said like 95% of, of them. And the, the trend is definitely going there. Uh, I think in the US it went from like 15% to now 35% in, in like a decade or something like that. So if you accelerate that, 
it will uh, uh, go further. Which leads me now to, to, to my long-winded question. Um, how do you think is, is, is Bitcoin changing the, the working landscape as, as you described it? Or, 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 and what elements of it is just human and will never go away? By changing the incentives, uh, you just pointed it out. The corporations are not anymore motivated by uh, giving a good service to the, their customers because they do not get most of their money from their customers anymore. They get it from debt because they are close to the money printer or they get it by subsidies, by filling forms to, uh, to, to fill out the, um, uh, ESG, right? The, uh, environment, env environmental, uh, bullshit criteria, uh, for, for the government. Uh, so that's how they get their money. Uh, so, so, so what incentives do they get to give people a good service? Uh, so we end up, look, look, look the, the state have, has grown so much and is controlling such a huge part of the economy. But even in the part, uh, in the remaining percentage, it's not supposed to be controlling. Well, most public, uh, no, most private corporations are still subject to to that state because most of their money, most of their revenue come from come from the debt. Most of their the, the CEOs and their boards are connected to politicians. They uh, they have whole compliance department so that they will be have a good relationship with the state, right? So the ends the 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 cheap easy money. Uh, that is uh, in the hand, con centrally controlled by states and central banks, uh, give infinite power to the central government to get even the pri supposedly private corporations uh, do what the state wants, right? So we all end up getting uh, working for the state one way uh, or another and it gets very difficult for small uh, entrepreneurs to um, to 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 earn a living in that environment because you have to compete with a uh, huge corporation let's say you are a small uh, a small businessman you run a youtube channel let's say you want to hire someone to do some job well, you you need to pay them to work for you, but you know they those employees they have the choice by either they can work for you a small business owner or they can have a much much well paid job working for a, a corporate entity a large corporate entity. So uh, it's a it's an unfair co co competition. The game is rigged, and your question is how does Bitcoin change that? Bitcoin changes everything. It turns that whole system around it's already upside down it's putting it back uh, on upright uh, so when you, you have hard money that nobody controls so it's uh, it restores the free market because nobody can cheat the system there is no state that has the power to uh, give away easy money to everyone if someone, state or not, wants hard money, the only way is to work for it. And how do you work for it? You provide a service to the market. You provide a service that is in demand by the free market. So you have to serve other people. And that's the beauty of the, the free market. It's not a one-way relationship where everyone serves the state and gets nothing in return. Uh, nothing. It means uh, it gets fake, fake easy money in return, right? Instead, everybody serves each other, so everybody gets richer, right? In my job, if I want to uh, to to earn hard money, I have to provide a service to someone who wants it, and that person uh, has to provide a service to someone else, and it doesn't have to be me. So. It's the only way an economy could scale by keeping people's freedom. 
and that's what that's uh, that's how things used to be in the first place that's how we uh civilization got its prosperity in the first place that's uh, because of free market we have discovered electricity we can use computers every that's because of free market uh everything we use daily was invented it's because there's some guy who had an idea and um and and um, improve the life of other people and got paid for it in a money that was harder than today's and bitcoin is the hardest money uh that can possibly exist so uh yeah it's going to restore things upright uh that's that's how i discovered bitcoin because i i i had low lost hope in so many things that when i heard about bitcoin for the first time I was mind blown. I said, wow, yes, that is, uh, that is another future that will restore the freedom we used to have. And that's what I want. So I'm going to learn about Bitcoin. I'm going to learn how it works. Make sure, uh, I'm not going to get hacked. Make sure I'm not going to get scammed. And once I have mastered it, I have mastered the skills to use it, then, uh, yeah, why should I own anything else? And why should I even stay there? Why should I, should my life be shit by staying in Canada if I own Bitcoin and I can be anywhere in the world? Why, why am I even here? I can go anywhere, anywhere in the world. I can go, uh, where the, the life is the best for me. So, so it changes everything. And being an entrepreneur, being, uh, making my own business where I can start my idea. I don't have to uh, sell myself out to a corporation anymore. I don't have to sell out my name, give away my mental health anymore. I can uh, experiment uh, with with products, with ideas. And if I find one that the market wants, I can get paid for it. And that's, that's, being, uh, that's how humanity improves. <laughs> Right. So, so to answer your question, yes, Bitcoin. That's how I think Bitcoin changed everything for everyone. If you watch or listen to my podcast on a regular basis, I guess you already bought some Bitcoin. And now the most important step is to keep the Bitcoin, keep them secure in a hardware wallet. My personal recommendation for hardware wallet is the Bitbox. It's super secure. It's simple to set up. It's also a perfect gift for a friend who has still the Bitcoin on an exchange. And you can get a 5% discount with the code Robin at the checkout. Visit Bitbox dot swiss slash robin to get your bitbox and if you really want to bulletproof your self-custody setup your security setup and maybe even your citizenship set up you have to talk to the bitcoin way if you go to the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash robin you get a 30 minute free call where you can dive deep with them if your self-custody setup is secure, if your citizenship is secure or maybe might be improvable, or your digital footprint in general is secure. They are the experts in cybersecurity, in Bitcoin self-custody, and how to be a secure, sovereign individual in general. Uh, and I think there are a lot of, like, uh, some people would always prefer to, to stay in within a, a bigger organization. But for me personally, it, uh, kind of in unleashed a lot of power, uh, to work for myself, even though, uh, my prior job was great. Like I, I liked the people there. I liked the work there. I just did not like the content. It was about IT security and not Bitcoin. If it would be Bitcoin, I probably would have uh, stayed there all, all my life or at least longer. Uh, and, because of that, oh, sorry, I, I, I did not hear you to stay where. If I stayed in my prior job, uh, in in my job that I was f before that, in my fear job, so I had a fear job before job. Um, okay. doing my my show here now, uh, and uh, because of that, I I really discovered how amazing the feeling is to to work for yourself and and being able to to pay the bills yourself with the, the things you actually 
get for, for, from your work, uh, uh, even though uh, there's nothing wrong with, with being within an organization, uh, if, if that organization uh, it treats you good and uh, serves something uh, greater. So yeah, I just wanted to, to, to get that out. Um, one thing that I was wondering about, um, you moved now, how did your life already change? What, what, what did you notice is different from Canada now to, to Asia? To Asia? Uh, well, it's so many things. People are different. People, uh, are closer to their family. Uh, I would say family values are very strong. I'm in a more, I'm not in a big city actually. So, um, it doesn't really apply to me because I'm a foreigner here. Um, so, uh, and, uh, a difference between, I think, even, even in Canada, originally, I do not come from a big city in Canada either. So what I would say is a difference between a North American small town versus a Asian small town where I am right now. Um, is that, there's less uh, less gossiping. People are still, even if it's a smaller town, I think people leave each other alone for the most part. Uh, they let people do their own things uh, and res <laughs> respect their boundaries. <laughs> Maybe not physically, because the <laughs> the population is more it's more it's a more densely populated area uh, compared to Canada. Yes. But, um, psychologically, socially, uh, people respect, have, have more respect for their, the, the other people's private life, it seems to. While, uh, at least where I come from, uh, there's a lot of gossiping, uh, families are tied together and everybody looks down on each other. Uh, there's a little bit of a, well, at least in French Canada, uh, a crab, crab in a bucket mentality where you better not uh, stand out uh, too much because most people around you are going to try to pull you down. Uh, I would see a lot of that in Canada. Uh, and here I see it less, uh, both because uh, it's Asia uh, and also yet, uh, only because I'm a foreigner. So I have yeah. less close contact to, uh, to, to most people. I can make friends, but yeah, that's, uh, that's one difference. And uh, it's a good thing. It's good for the for the free market. It's uh, uh, it's easy. Every, life is just easier for everything. If I want to buy something, uh, the 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 stores work hours are are longer. It's easy, things are easier to get. While in uh, even in bigger cities in Canada, shops close at an early time. It's difficult. Things are difficult to get, and thing everything seems more complicated. There are taxes uh regulations you're not you're not supposed to carry it that way if you you're supposed to carry what you buy in uh, a special kind of uh, carriage in a special kind of bag so much bullshit uh here uh i can i can buy beer alcohol at uh, 24 hour and uh, drink in the street if i like uh, as long as i don't do do too much trouble and uh, that's a uh, that's a big difference, I think. That most people will look down on it, but uh, it's still it's not illegal. I'm not going to get arrested for that. Is so, yeah. um, is in Canada also like the supermarkets closed on Sunday and they are closing like at uh, six p.m., seven p.m. Or how is it in Canada? Oh well, uh, well, uh, not that it's not that bad. At least when I was there, but um, it's. Uh, just simple things like the way cities are organized, it will be far. <laughs> it's like a, you, you, you need a car to get to the place. And, um, and, and yeah, um, because you will have to get to, uh, to a big chain, to a big, huge, uh, large, uh, grocery store because the smaller chains cannot compete. So, uh, while, uh, while here, uh, I can find pretty much anything I want, uh, at a walking distance. So yeah, that's a, that's a huge difference. Yeah, I also don't like that about Austria. Uh, stores, c uh, close on Sundays 
Um, you have to get your things before like seven or eight PM, sometimes even six PM, uh, because everything closes <laughs> after that. Uh, you basically have to go to a, like a gas station or a train station, uh, to go in like a really small supermarket where you can only get small things or trash. So, uh, it, it's, 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 um, I don't, I, it, you, you can really nicely see. I think that's a great example how it looks when uh, the government is interfering with the free market. And Sunday, there is the supermarkets closed in Austria, but only the supermarkets uh, are allowed to open that are inside of a gas station or inside of a train station. They are allowed to open, or also the, the ones in on an airport. Uh, so those are open, which means on a Sunday, you have to stand in line to get into a supermarket. Uh, and that's because the market uh, is efficient, but the government uh, is uh, grabbing into the market and closing it on one particular day, but people still want things on a Sunday too. So they're standing in line to get things on the supermarket. So I think that's a, a great example of how when the government tries to interfere in the market, the same thing with money printing, uh, it creates inefficiencies and it, it creates, uh, burdens, uh, and it's, 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 it's a mess. Uh, I don't know how it's in Asia if they're also closed, but probably they are, they're, they're open, right? Oh, well, there's no door store everywhere at any time. Yeah. But look, uh, 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 between, between Canada, look, uh, Canada likes, Canadians like to brag about the healthcare system, uh, so look, some people have uh, get cancer and they cannot get treatment on time to save themselves because the waiting times are too long. And that's an effect of, uh, of, uh, of a centralized economy, uh, because there's centralized money. And, uh, if the, uh, if it's a public, uh, public system on top of that, uh, there's, there's the free market is a way to uh, to to make to to gauge the price to find the right price of things of goods and services and if a government intervention is going to say hey healthcare is free well uh the the supply of uh, nurse and doctor's time is still limited so people are going to have to pay in another way uh, reality is reality. We cannot avoid that. So the way we're paying for it is by huge long waiting time. And if on top of that, the, because of the public system, the, the, the wages are fixed and, uh, uh, all the money goes to, uh, to the administrators instead of the doctors and workers. Well, there's no more incentive to, uh, there's less incentive to give a good work. So the quality of the service decreases. So if you want to, even if you get cancer, you, you do not get your treatment in time in Canada. While here, uh, look, I, I did not get cancer, fortunately, but, uh, I, when I needed to meet a doctor, have a health check, it's part of, um, of getting the work visa. When I, uh, anytime I, I needed to get a health check done, I, in half a day, it was done. So talk about efficiency, you know, really, that's, really cool. uh, that's the difference. Um, perfect. Uh, uh, let's, let's close the topic for a moment because you said something earlier that you were, have been in, in, in Bitcoin quite a while and you, uh, also, um, uh, wrote me that you have been a maxi uh, in Bitcoin since 2016 and you've never touched shit coins. Uh, yeah. which is a really interesting topic for me because <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I rarely met people that just st stick to Bitcoin from the beginning. Uh, most of the, the Bitcoin learning curve, uh, kind of involves, uh, shit coins and altcoins, uh, in there. So why and how did you <laughs> avoid shit coins? <laughs> right. Uh, that's a good question. And. Uh, I was surprised when I started li listening to other, uh, Bitcoin maxis, uh, in the more recent years that it seems to be the normal path that, uh, people who get into Bitcoin have a shitcoin phase <laughs> and then they get wrecked and then they find, Oh wait, Bitcoin is the real thing. Okay. Good. 
uh, it was kind of a surprise to me. I was like, what? <laughs> why? <laughs> why is that? I, I did not have, well, I think, I think my shitcoin phase was uh, real estate. I think that's why. Real oh. estate. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a different shitcoin phase. <laughs> that's, uh, real estate was my shitcoin. Uh, cause I was disappointed in my job. I was disappointed in politics, but I still had hope of staying in Canada in back in 2016 because I had just bought my condo. So I finally made it. You know, I, 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 I sacrificed so much of my, of my hard work to finally, um, do the move and buy, buy my condo. So get my mortgage and, uh, yeah. Uh, and that was a big step for me because since I, I was growing up, I left my small town to live, uh, live in a bigger city. And I, I just noticed how much of my money was wasted on rent and I couldn't move back with my parents. So I was like, okay, uh, I, 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 I'll, I kind of understood at a very early age that the money was depreciating. And that if I wanted to avoid working out all my life for nothing, I had as soon as possible to get a harder asset and real estate, because that's where my money was going. I was wasting most of my money in rent. Uh, so yeah, so, uh, so, so I went to school, studied hard, got a job, did all the sacrifice, got my mortgage and found, uh, bought my condo. And then I realized, wait, um, there's so much money we spend on taxes, and uh, not just that. I, 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 I expected, I expected the taxes. Um, it was part of the calculation, so I said, okay, that's going to be fine. But wait, taxes are increasing year after year because <laughs> governments are bankrupt and they are not going down. The, the so not only the amount of tax you're paying is increasing, the percentage is increasing and the percentage of the value is increasing and the value is going up too. So the actual money you pay in taxes is going up much faster than I had expected. And there's all kinds of regulations. So I bought my condo and, uh, so, okay, I, I, I want to, uh, I, I'll go to the board meeting because I want to see how my money is managed, right? Uh, so I go there. And it's all a bunch of baby boomers who, uh, protect their, uh, their own interests, right? And it's uh, not in my backyard. And they make, uh, regulations to, uh, to, 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 to protect the short term, high time preference value of the condo they can, they can rent and trade instead of the long term value, the low time preference value of their asset. So, uh, you pay, you pay, when you own real estate, you pay, uh, homeowner association fees, right? And that money is supposed to go to clean up garbage collection, like, uh, maintenance, right? And the, uh, safety fee to, um, in case of some emergency, something happens. Well, that money, uh, was, was, was taken, was stolen. It went into lawyer fees and it just happened that that lawyer was a friend of a guy in the board. So it's, I saw it's all corrupt. It's all corrupt. It's not, uh, it's, um, it's overblown. It's, uh, uh, it's going to crash. It, it's, um, it, the, the price is too high. It's not worth that price. So I was already looking for a harder asset and I got disappointed in real estate too. And then in 2016, I, I, I listened to, uh, the Joe Rogan, Rogan podcast. Uh, Andreas Antonopoulos was on the Joe Rogan podcast in August 2016. And he talked about Bitcoin and it's, it, it, it reached me. It just connect all the dots because I was looking for harder money all my life. He talked. He talked about uh, that. We, he said we have the choice between two futures, one in which because uh, cash is on the way out, and the future will be digital money. So, what kind of digital money do we want? Do we want a Chinese-like social credit? 
digital money where everybody is watched and surveilled or we want a decentralized digital money. Uh, I was already familiar with, uh, with decentralized system. I, I had learned Linux already. I was familiar with, uh, uh, the BitTorrent protocol. So when mm, he mentioned Bitcoin, that's just a name, uh, was familiar to me because that sounded like BitTorrent. Right. And I remember Napster back in the day got sued and uh, taken out of business. Uh, it was a music sharing service uh, because it was a company. But uh, the BitTorrent protocol still exists today. You can still share files peer to peer with other people. So when I learned about Bitcoin, I already understood that was a peer to peer monetary network. Wow. That. Uh, uh, I, I was mind blown. So I said, yeah, I, I'm going to get into it. So I, uh, back in Montreal, there was the Bitcoin embassy place. It was a place, I think it was created by Francis Pouliot, right? Uh, I did not meet the guy, but when I went there, it's the first time I bought Bitcoin for the first time, right? And I put it into my wallet. I talked to the people there. Uh, introduce me to Bitcoin, how it works. Yeah, this is your address. Oh, uh, congratulations. You got your first Bitcoin. And by the way, we also sell some Ethereum. And then I, I kind of, I kind of got it. I, I, I kind of, uh, uh, yeah, I, I just got it. I said, ah, oh, that's how they are going to attack Bitcoin by taking newcomers like me when they get they hear about Bitcoin and they want to get it, they're going to divert their attention into buying something that prom promise bigger returns or whatever. And okay. yeah, so I, I said, no, I'm going to stay away from that. So I did not buy any shitcoin, just stick to Bitcoin. That's super interesting uh, uh, to... It, it's like you're saying that uh, altcoins are an attack vector on Bitcoin, basically, right? It's the it's the only kind of successful one. I mean, successful in a sense because it it, it still it diverts. It's uh, it slows yeah. down the adoption of Bitcoin. It diverts newcomers' attention. People who would like to invest in Bitcoin, people who need it the most, they are pushed away by the noise by the, all the scams, shit coins that are booming around it. Uh, some set of very special circumstance made it such that I, 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 I knew, uh, I needed harder money. I did not want to get banned. I learned about Linux. I had known about the centralized system. I wanted to avoid a Chinese like, uh, social credit system. All of this together made it that the, the dot connected and I saw uh, Bitcoin is the only hard asset. I just saw it. So when other shitcoin popped up, popped up around it, I was like, oh, no, I've, I already had real estate. <laughs> Why should I? No, <laughs> no, no, I don't want that. Uh, but for most other people, they, they yeah, it's good. there's going to be some pain uh, necessary to, to for them to learn. I just wanted to see if I find the, the page, but I don't find it right now. There's a, uh, a site that shows what's the Bitcoin dominance without stable coins. Because for me, it's called coinmarketcap.com. Oh, it's on coinmarketcap. Oh, interesting. Uh, yeah. Um, well, it must not be the only one, but on top of the site, you can, they have the indicator. It's the oh. Bitcoin dominance. But, but the Bitcoin dominance without, um, stable coins also. Because most oh. of them uh, have the stable coins inside them. Uh, and I feel like the Bitcoin dominance with the stable coins, I don't know how much sense this m makes because the stable coins are like basically fiat. If we include fiat, then, then Bitcoin dominance is like at 0.1% or something like that. If in I don't know, I don't know just as if I had never given any importance to it. I, uh, it's, uh, it's interesting, yeah. but it, um, it's it's uh, if if you look at Bitcoin dominance, it's 
it's like 50 to 60 percent usually uh, around the time i think right now it's like a 56 or something like that that where i looked the last time and if you exclude the stable coins uh it's it's way more it's like 70 or something like that uh the last time i looked uh it, it, it's a while ago but uh yeah it's an interesting attack like i never saw it as an attack vector it's it's a distraction uh but it well, is uh, just uh, i think you even on podcasts i listen to uh, especially yours uh when you do go into youtube comments uh the first one you see on top is always some scams right why is that yeah yeah I, uh, I, if you if you want to get the real uh uh positive or negative or more, i mean real feedback about your episode you have to dig a little bit and it's the same thing with bitcoin uh if you want to get to the real thing uh you have to dig uh you have to do some work you have to dig a little bit because um there's a lot of scam there's a lot of noise around it and it's easy to get distracted uh, and look, uh, that's the first time I heard about Bitcoin. But then, uh, when I chose to, uh, go all in and leave my country, but all my wealth in it, uh, well, I, I had to really be sure that, uh, it was worth something and that it was not going to crash. So, uh, I really thought a long time, uh, should I diversify or not? Uh, cause, uh, everybody, that's the, that's a prevalent strategy. You never put everything in one basket, all your eggs in one basket. You always need to diversify. Uh, but I couldn't, I just, I, as soon as I start looking at other coins, I said, no, that's, that's bullshit. That's a, that's a scam. And then the next one, that, no, that's, there's a company. It's all like that. Only Bitcoin was the decentralized one, uh, with no font, no, no company. And that's what I needed. I need a real asset like digital gold, something that is not made up by anyone, something that just exists on the internet. And it's a, it's a part of nature now. It's part of humanity. It's, uh, uh, it's as if it's not an invention. It's like we discovered, uh, wealth. We discovered hardest, uh, we discovered absolute scarcity. That's, uh, that's a mathematical truth. It's like we discovered, uh, 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 a number, uh, that is hard to find, <laughs> right? It's something, um, we, we, we still can forget it, but what I mean is it's not something anybody can own. It's not it do, the Bitcoin by itself do not belong to any country or company or whatever, and that's one one of the thing that makes it special. That's uh, that's uh, really really true, and uh, I like also that you looked into real estate first. I feel like a, a lot of Bitcoiners, the more I dig, uh, like thought about real estate or actually did real estate uh, or was in the, in the ways to get to be in real estate. Um, what, what was the final thing for you to, to not do real estate? Like why, why for the people that are still playing with the photo, oh, I have some Bitcoin, but I also want to do real estate. Um, wh why, why not that? And also, um, do you recommend, I mean, it's a personal situation always, but do you recommend, um, renting or buying your own house? Because that's, that's also kind of a real estate property that okay, you own. Okay. Uh, I, I, I do not recommend anything because, uh, every, every person's situation is different. Um, and even me, uh, when I'm talking about real estate, I, I never wanted to gamble, uh, or, in, invest or play with stocks because it's that money represents my my work my time my my time on earth i don't want to gamble with it and play with it and uh, i did not invest in real estate i was just led to it because i was already looking for a harder money uh i wanted to just save my money not invest and what I thought was that real estate was the way to do it. And I wanted to own my place and, uh, and that's it. But I did not think, I, I did not want to, uh, make profit from it. I did not, I never saw it as an investment. 
And it's the same thing with Bitcoin. Bitcoin does a better job at that than anything else. So when I got into Bitcoin, uh, when I discovered Bitcoin, uh, then you see, I, <laughs> I was very close <laughs> to, uh, to, to sell everything I own and move out of the country because I was already disappointed in everything else. So I was only a small step away from, uh, selling my, my, my condo to put everything in Bitcoin and move abroad. And I think most people are still not in that situation. So that's why I don't recommend anything to anyone. Some people have families. Uh, some people live in the countryside, in the city. Look, some people prefer to rent. Some people need to move often. Some people prefer to settle in one place for a long time. Everybody's situation is different. But uh, if you want to save your money, there is nothing better than Bitcoin. There is no second best. That's what I would say. One more thing um, with about stacking Bitcoin, because I feel like I had one of my, like the first 10 podcasts, I think he was on and, and, and he said like, it's, it's really hard for him. He was also uh, anonymous here and, and because he was an early Bitcoiner. So he had a big st uh, stack and he was like, it's hard for him to stack because his Bitcoin net worth uh, was uh so big and bitcoin then grew so fast that the, even when he drops his whole income in bitcoin it, it doesn't make a huge dent in the in the whole thing it's like a drop in the bucket uh so with all the the the, the early bitcoin ogs i'm always um an ogs is like a, a weird word because when are you an OG? I feel like when you are entering in 2024, you're still, still kind of an OG because we are quite early, but, uh, there, there are no rules to do that. But as you are early in, in Bitcoin, um, how, how, how do you keep stacking, uh, even though the, the income doesn't grow <laughs> in the same level that your, your, your stack grows over, over time? I mean, how do I keep stacking? It, it's, it's interesting for me because when you have, uh, let's say you have like, uh, ha like let's say hundred units, uh, of, of your, uh, um, stack is, is, uh, in Bitcoin, whatever the unit is. And then you can add 0 0.001 um, percent of that in uh, in your Bitcoin stack. Is it is it hard? Is it, like, do you ever consider selling some Bitcoin, or do you ever is like, oh, I, I stacked enough now, I can like uh, <laughs> just just waste my money or just suspend it because it doesn't make a huge difference when you. Uh, do the small income to like a huge portion of, of your, uh, Bitcoin. Because I also see it in, 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 in my, um, uh, years, like over, over the years, um, the, the accumulation pace of, of my Bitcoin slowed down because the Bitcoin price just went up. Uh, so, uh, it, it's sometimes I'm wondering, like, if you do stacking long enough, at some point, are you stopping stacking? Are, are you spending more because you're like, oh, I have a, a huge safety net with Bitcoin already uh, yeah. and, and keep stacking on? Do you get where I'm going with this? Yeah, yeah, I see. Uh, yeah, because it measured in SATs, uh, when you use Bitcoin as the unit of account, uh, if it's a deflash, the def deflationary money, then... Yeah, the amount of sats you're going to save and stack, uh, is going to slow down over time when the value is going up. Um, uh, yeah. So, uh, when you look back, you could say, yeah, sure. Uh, look at those Bitcoin OGs. They got those huge sat stacks with very little effort while I have to work hard to stack for to, 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 to be uh, able to stack very little amount, right? But um, I'll say two things. First is that uh, that's how the bit, that's why Bitcoin is successful. That's how Bitcoin will take over the fiat system because the, the, the network effect of the fiat system is so strong that to be able to overcome it, 
another monetary system must be order of magnitudes better than it. 100 times, 1000 times, 10,000 times better than it. Whatever number, like if, if it's even measurable. But I mean, uh, being only a little bit better than fiat is not enough. We need to be overwhelmingly better than fiat to be able to beat it, to grow faster than it and eventually replace it and be the world's reserve currency and the world uh, trading um, the the media the world's medium of exchange on the higher higher layer layers right so in order to beat the fiat system um, the incentive to adopt it early must be high and that's what the OG did. Uh, the, er, the, the people who, who had the foresight to see where the future, what kind of future was better and who bet on it must be very well rewarded. Right. And the price of uh, adopting it later will be high compared to that. The second thing is that uh it's compared to the OGs, right? To the early adopters. That's when we look back in the past. But a uh, deflationary monetary network, what it does is that it increases in value. So you should look in the future, right? So you're instead of looking at those people who adopted early in the past, how they got it better. Well, look at yourself. Look at how early you are compared to uh, Bitcoin as a, as a world reserve currency adopted by countries as a, as a monetary network for the whole of humanity when we'll use Bitcoin in the solar system when it's not even only uh, money for humanity now but also for all future generations so instead of looking 15 years in the past why not look a thousand years in the future look how early we are now right so yeah uh it's hard to stack a few sta a few sats now but <laughs> What, what is a few, a few sats now is not going to be a few in the future, right? Right. If it's successful, it's going to be worth a lot. And the, um, the expectancy of value compared to the risk, the, the, it has almost no chance it fails and a quite high chance it's successful. Uh, in the worst case, you lose what you put into it. In the best case, that will be life-changing money. Then, yeah, the incentive is there. Why not put a little bit into it? I think that's so a, that's that's a, that's a great insight uh, because when we look in the past, uh, it's like easy to say like, oh, it's it's unfair, or uh, oh, oh no, no, like it's it's uh, I could have done that, but you did not, so like it's fair. So, <laughs> so like that's 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 a ego thing that everyone in bitcoin kind of has to go through even someone that came into 2015 uh saw people coming in 2011 and were like oh shit no no they they were they were so early how can i stack as many sets as, as they but yeah even like michael Selig, he came in 2020 and he uh, achieved a lot uh, uh in, in stacking imagine him getting him Get, getting earlier in like two, three, four years earlier, <laughs> he would have had like a million Bitcoin or something like that. So it all, it all works out in the end. I feel like everyone gets the, the price they deserve. And I myself is like, I, I got also in, in 2020, but I first saw it and little bit researched about it in 2017, but I was too arrogant, uh, to understand it. That that's all. Like I, I was just too lazy and arrogant to really research about it. Otherwise, uh, I could have uh, accumulated way more. Uh, so I had to pay the, the higher price in, in 2020. And I think that's an, it's an ego thing that we, we have to step over. And it's, it's great how you, 
how you described it. One last topic that I want to uh, touch on, and we're already very long with the time. I hope I hope you have still a few minutes time. Is, is that all right? No with problem. You? No Perfect. problem. Uh, it's early night for me. No problem. Um, when we talk about Bitcoin, uh, I always like to also talk about freedom and how we do it in the, in, in, in the future. And I think you are um, a unique perspective because you moved out of your country. Um, how, how free do you consider yourself to be and what steps are you taking to enhance that freedom or to protect the freedom that you already have? Yeah. Uh, yeah. As I told you, my, yeah, my step to move out of Canada first. Uh, but once that move was made, uh, the, the path was not easy. Uh, look, I, I really struggled in the last five years, uh, here because I, uh, I, I needed to keep a job as a foreign worker in, uh, in my new place. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's not, uh, it's not a job what that I studied for necessarily, uh, Foreigners so do not have a good, um, a good, <laughs> always have a good situation. Uh, I mean, migrants workers, uh, legal, legal migrants worker do not have the best uh, economic situation. So even with, uh, with the, with a quite low income, uh, I chose, no, I'm not going to, uh, to, to, to sell my sats and, because of the price increase, I realized, yeah, look, uh, you, you, your question is, how did it increase my freedom? I, I'm coming to it. The, the fact that I hold my wealth in Bitcoin, uh, made me more confident that, uh, whatever happens to me, whatever shit happens, uh, if I lose a job, uh, if I have to move for some time, whatever shit happens, I'm going to be fine because my money is not stuck at a bank. It's not stuck in the real estate. It's, it's here with me. I, I own my stuff. Even if my device breaks, I still have my 12 words. Okay. So it gave me a, a peace of mind that I never had before because before I was always running, trying to, mm, <laughs> catch up with the hamster wheel. I need to get into real estate as fast as possible, else I'm going to be stuck in slavery forever. Uh, I, I don't have those worries anymore with Bitcoin. I know I'm going to be fine and I can focus my mind on other greater things and uh, appreciate the beauty of life. I, it doesn't mean I don't struggle. I mean, look, in the last five years, I, I worked hard and I, uh, I did a lot of paperwork to get everything in order. But, uh, I know also that m most of it is behind me now already. Even if it's not completely in order yet, um, most of it is behind me and I can start seeing the beauty around me again. And that's a great thing because that's something in my early adopt uh, adulthood, since I had started working, since I was always stressed out about saving myself from, from, from some, from some shit, from some danger, I, I had forgotten it, how life is beautiful around us, <laughs> right? That's something we can appreciate when we grew up as a teenager, when we start, uh, leave school and uh, start traveling a little bit, seeing out the world, and then we start working and it uh, kind of forget it well i could start seeing that again and that's something that is uh it's enabled by bitcoin uh absolutely because uh, i don't see uh i don't see most people who do not own bitcoin uh appreciate life as much uh seriously and you get that that zen uh with bitcoin i i got it today as a podcast uh, as as a comment on the podcast if, uh, that someone said like uh, the longer someone is in bitcoin it feels like the the more zen they have in <laughs> in, in life uh like you 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 stop giving uh, a shit about what other people are doing and, and you try to focus on, on the, the good things in life and you try to focus really on, on the things in front of you 
uh, it's, it's an interesting thing that I also discovered with Bitcoiners that are on the podcast with Bitcoiners that are a little bit newer to the game, uh, with Bitcoiners that are a little bit longer to the game. So it's, it's interesting to see that it's like uh, progression. The Maslow's a uh, pyramid of needs right you know, at the basis you need yeah uh to to be to to have air to breathe and then to have food and then physical safety well it seems that before the like economic safety was the 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 place in the ladder where like i was kind of stuck and uh i i couldn't see a way to to get above it and since I got Bitcoin, I know that, uh, I, I can, uh, I can, I can push forward. I can achieve higher goals after that. Very true. I love that. Um, last question for the entry team that I'll now ask all my guests. What can we learn from you besides Bitcoin and moving? Beside Bitcoin and moving from countries, from my old country. What can we learn from me? Yeah, uh, beside, good question. Hmm. Um, it, Bitcoin is part of it, but it's not, uh, it's not the same thing. Uh, I think, uh, I, I told you at the beginning of the podcast that I'm a big fan of decentralized identities, separate identities. Uh, when you ask me about why I stay anonymous in your podcast, uh, I do want to control my money, control my Bitcoin, but I do, I'm a big fan of controlling my data. And that's something, uh, I think people give away very easily by KYCing themselves to goods and to, to services, to Bitcoin exchanges, but not only that, to every Every online service, you have to KYC yourself to, to use it. And I think people do not value their data enough, uh, because that's, uh, it's not a currency. It's not you. Data is not a currency used as a, a to, to exchange, but it has a lot of value, especially in, uh, uh, with AI and look, I study statistics. I use data. I, I can make use of it. Uh, and yeah, people do not value it enough. And what happens when you give your, your phone knows everything you do and everywhere you go and yeah, everything you do, uh, they end up knowing you better than you know yourself. And they can predict what you do better than you can predict it yourself. And that's, um, that's something very valuable. That's something I do in my own life. And that's one reason why I got into Bitcoin because I can control my own money. But before that, uh, fundamentally it's about controlling my own information and protecting my privacy. So that's something I do in my own life about everything. I keep track of a lot of things and I do not share it with any uh, with, with lots of services. So okay. that's my answer. That's a very valuable, uh, and I think we have to be more aware, especially with big tech and er everything going on. Um, for, thank you for, for that insight. Um, we, uh, we have now the end routine where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest, uh, without knowing who the next guest actually is. And your question from the previous guest is what was the single article or book that orange build you the most the single one there are many but if i need to say one mm -hmm, uh it will be uh, 1984 of uh, george orwell oh that's an interesting choice yeah that, uh, that, that's will, a big one yeah 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 uh, it's uh, it's about totalitarianism and that's about how low things can go uh how bad things can go if we do not uh care about about care enough about our freedom mm -hmm. so under this under understanding that message uh unlocked in my mind uh the importance of freedom and led me to the discovery of bitcoin amazing Really, really cool. Uh, perfect. And, uh, thank you for, for being on the show. Before I let you go, uh, where can people find you if they have uh, questions for you, if they want to ask you something? 
Uh, just on Twitter. I use this account only on Twitter. So uh, send me a private message or reply to one of my comments and I will get to you. Perfect. Then uh, I say YouTube. Yes, yeah, for Twitter and YouTube. Uh, I, I, will, I will put it in the in the description so people can easily find it. Um, also, thank you, uh, Medo Satoshist. <laughs> Medo Satoshist, right? <laughs> did, I, did I get it right? Because uh, I'm mad about Satoshis. That's the only. Uh, that's the only uh, uh, explanation. <laughs> Medo Satoshist. <laughs> it's in, in, uh, it's hard for me to, to say. It. Interesting. Very cool. Perfect. Then, yeah, thank you for being on the show. It was a pleasure to talk with you. It was a really cool uh, talk. Uh, and also, thank you for everyone watching and listening. As always, I'll be back uh, tomorrow with another episode. Bye-bye.